So today we're going to be talking with uh, Chris Morgan. He's um, a principal over at Eastern Township School Board who's been being a principal there for about the last 12 years. And um, he's been te- uh, being a, he's the principal at Bet- uh, Butler Elementary in Bedford, uh, Quebec. And he's been there for nine years. And we thought it might be fun to touch base and see kind of how administrative um, perspective, see an administrative perspective of uh, the shutdown, the reopening, and all of that. So, I wanna, I wanna say uh, welcome to uh, Mr. Morgan. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Appreciate oh, that's it. great. Thanks so much for uh, taking some time to, to talk with me here today. Um, so we're gonna just kind of start off. I have a couple of questions, just maybe just to kind of set the scene a bit. Chris, is tell us a little bit about your school, like where it is, how many kids you have, teachers, just a little kind of intro to your environment where you are okay well the school is butler elementary and we're located in bedford quebec so that's the townships uh, we normally have a population of a little over 160 kids um it's an anglophone school obviously and the vast majority of the kids uh, come from anglophone families although we have uh, some kids that still have eligibility that are more francophone at home that uh, that do attend it's a school. It's an AN school, so there's a, there's quite a bit of poverty. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's uh, I'm obviously very biased, but it's the most incredible little school. And a lot of <laughs> excuse the bell, as Great you can time. tell, we're we're open for business. Um, but um, you know, a lot of community involvement, a lot of volunteers. It's a uh, it's a country school. Great, awesome. So let's let's go back a little bit, Chris, about. Um, when the when the shutdown first started, you know, as of March thirteenth, schools were were shut down. Kids went home. Teachers went home. How how did you guys keep in touch with your kids and the teachers? And like, how did you how did you kind of bring them together? Because um, I did see some posts on your Facebook. I love your Facebook page, by the way. Um, of all these cool things that you guys were doing to kind of bring keep your community together. Can you talk to that a bit? Sure. Uh, well, we did a variety of things. So thanks to our super volunteer, Faye Hamilton, we do have a great like uh, social uh, media network, including Facebook. Um, but uh, we were up and running pretty quick, like in terms of what we were able to do. Um, so we, we put together a learning resource uh, website so the kids could, uh, could access their materials by grade level. Um, but then we also did like personalized messages. We, uh, we had the teachers take turns uh, recording themselves uh, reading a book. Um, you know, just messages from the principal online. Uh, one really cool thing that we did is just to help out families, uh, both related to the school and just the community. Is we had a we had a what we called the butler pantry, where families could come to uh, uh, a little pantry that we had set up in a garden shed and uh, and pick up some groceries and things uh, for for no cost. So just trying to help out because uh, obviously it's some of the work uh, that the parents would normally have uh, without the COVID. That's amazing what you guys did. I saw some photos of that pantry. It's uh, um, pretty amazing what you guys did for the community itself. Um, and how, how key is that social media part of how, how important was it to kind of keep you guys in touch with everybody else? I think in terms of this, this situation in particular was really important. Like, uh, normally I would say that our social media is to kind of, uh, it's to, well, it's to get messages across to the population. So we use it now as a communication tool, but it's also often just to advertise the really cool things that we're doing, but it transformed into, uh, something key that we were hoping the kids were going to be viewing because uh, we wanted them. It's Listen, it was an anxious time, right? Sure. Nobody, sure. Uh, either, even adults, we weren't quite sure what was going on and what it was going to look like in a month or two or a year. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so we were trying to you know lower anxiety and get the kids, uh, just to get the kids to know that we're still thinking about them. Absolutely. I think that too, eh, with, even this online thing, they always say the most important thing is to make sure that you keep those relationships alive and that the kids feel like even though you're through a screen, um, you still feel that connection to the teacher, to the school, to the principals, et cetera. Right. What were some, um, so once, 
the government had kind of said, okay, we're going to slowly push you guys back. What were, how did ETSB respond to the reopening plans? What was kind of the process that you guys had to go through as the administrators? Well, we had several meetings, obviously, like management meetings where we uh, went through uh, different protocols and the, uh, uh, what we call the BG team, the buildings and grounds team really came together uh, in terms of uh, making sure that we had the supplies uh, and the structure needed to, to be as safe as we could, like in terms of disinfecting and things like that. Right. Um, we were left, you know, to a certain extent, we were left to our own devices to tailor things to our own, uh, our own schools, but they were certainly like a valuable resource. And as I said, they, uh, you know, there were open discussions about what a typical school day could look like and suggestions as to how to handle things. And then uh, the administrators also shared best practices. Right, right. Could you share a couple of those? What were some of the best practices that they had kind of suggested? Uh, well, uh, things that came out of that and things that we in implemented here at Butler's, we kind of created like these, um, it's almost like one room schoolhouses within the big school. So, like, we created pods where the kids uh, were to get together as a group, uh, but with a limited number of adults. So you'd have two or three adults assigned to a group of kids. Mm -hmm. And um, so the old idea of, of having the French teacher move from class to class or having kids um, uh, move from one end of the building to, the, uh, to another to attend a different uh, physical classroom, all that changed. Mm -hmm. um, so, th yeah, that's a, that's a good example. Yep. Yeah. And when, when you guys started to come back, what were some of your big surprises or things that you hadn't expected to happen and happened? And like, were there some things that once you reopened the school up that, that some, some surprises came out of it or some happy coincidences or. Well, I think that the biggest thing, like, and it's almost like a personal thing, but I'm sure I'm not alone is I, I myself was, uh, I was unsure of the decision to put it lightly. And, uh, uh, it wasn't because I was necessarily worried about the virus. Like I, I realized that we were in a pretty good situ situation. And I, statistically, if we were careful, I was confident that we would be okay. I mean, you mm -hmm. can't control everything, but I still felt good about that. Mm -hmm. What stressed me out was uh, what I anticipated would be anxiety amongst the kids, especially like, because you know, you're going to see teachers in masks and you're mm -hmm. only going to be able to walk down the hallway in one particular direction and you've got, now you have an assigned bathroom and you can't just go to that bathroom. Right, that, right. Uh, all sorts of different little changes. There's different personnel. We had some teachers that did not come back because, um, you know, pregnancies and other reasons. Sure. Um, and so I was worried that kids would come back and this would be too much. Uh, and the, the surprise was, uh, that I was wrong essentially. <laughs> like it did not take long and the routines were learned and the kids were, the kids were anxious to get back. They were smiling and happy and it didn't take long for the anxiety to go down amongst them and the staff. And we kind of, we've kind of created a new normal and it's, it, it went better than my negative attitude uh, uh, expected. Right. Well, I guess a lot of it falls on your shoulders too, right? As, as, as the principal of the school, you have to kind of be the last filter for everything, right? I do. Yeah, I guess so. That's true. But I mean, it's I, none of this happens without like, uh, like, I, I'm not going to blab on forever, but just uh, I have an amazing group of people working with me. So it's, uh, uh, they make it a lot easier for sure. Yeah. So let's talk maybe a little bit about that. Um, so the kids come back and I, did you still have other kids at home as well? Or were you working in a hybrid kind of where you had some online and some face to face? Yeah, we uh, and we still do. So we started off with about uh, thirty percent of our population returning, which is I think it's low in comparison to the francophone numbers. Mm -hmm. But but in terms of the Anglo schools, it was a pretty high number, mm -hmm. and we've gone up since then. So we're probably close to forty forty five percent now. Wow. Um, so that means a, a large proportion of our kids are still at home. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, like we were right off the bat, we had created a website where. Uh, um, kids and parents had um, access to individual lessons by grade. Mm -hmm. um, and then on top of that, we have, um, we had some online sessions. Uh, and on top of that, we distributed the ministry packages and the, 
you know, the materials that they provided for us. So it was a bit of a mishmash, but we're still doing that uh, for the kids that are online. We've got some teachers that are really tech savvy. And so we're, some of the kids are zooming in for different classes and, and, and sharing the class virtually at the same time as the kids that are physically there. Uh, so it's been a little bit of, and, and we're continuing to, to kind of improve that. We're working on that. Actually, we're doing some learn workshops right now on online teaching. Right. Yeah, we've offered a series of just to kind of get teachers talking again about it. We find, too, that when teachers are having these pedagogical conversations, ideas start to just expand. Um, so whenever conversations can be had, we're all for it. It's great. What? Um, let me circle back a bit to that. So what kind of PD was offered by you know, your community that kind of supported the teachers to kind of get those less tech savvy teachers over that hump of lowering their anxiety and, and um, seeing online in a different kind of way, maybe shifting mindset a bit. Well, I don't think it's fair to say like, I mean, I did not have every teacher producing like using Google classroom or, or zoom to have, uh, to have their kids take place and uh, take part in that manner, especially in the younger grades. Sure. Uh, but we are lucky enough that we have, um, quite a few, as I said, like tech savvy, uh, uh, teachers that served as mentors to try and, uh, create and, and service our own staff. So our own local PD, um, other than that, like, um, there wasn't anything that I think is uh, revolutionary. Like I said, we had our website, mm -hmm. uh, and for those that were a little less comfortable with the technology, I mean, all they had to do was, uh, create their document or their lesson plan. Uh, in a manner that could be understood from home with little teacher guidance. Uh, and then we made sure that that was distributed electronically online uh, for the uh, parents to use. Um, and then, like I said, because, I mean, now we seem to have some directives in terms of the fall, but mm -hmm. we're, we're continuing like uh, that series of workshops that you mentioned, like what, there's another one again today, like yeah. all our staff is participating in that oh, just great. so that, you know, um, if things do uh, revert to a certain extent, uh, we'll be even more ready to, to service the kids online. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was kind of a, a curveball yesterday at that press conference. Um, yesterday, um, our Minister of Education announced that we that elementary and some of the secondary students would be going back to school. So again, the adjusting. It's so organic, this whole <laughs> flow of things. So you got to kind of keep uh, your feet on the ground and your ears peeled uh, dramatically. So, Chris, just to kind of like, as we kind of um, wrap this up a bit, um, as, as a principal, what were some of your biggest kind of aha moments or advice that you might like to share with other administrators of things that you came to realize through this whole shutdown and shifting practices, basically? Well, I, I really, like I said, I think the idea of uh, creating little uh, teams amongst the staff that were working with a limited number of kids was, you know, not only does it help in terms of the Sante Public directives, but it was, um, it, it made sure that the ki the teachers didn't feel isolated and on their own, right? So right. they were going through something, but they were going through something with a partner or partners. Right. So I think that was... Uh, was definitely helpful. Uh, things you need to think about, like a, one of the realities that's been difficult is um, on more than a few occasions, we've had teachers out for a couple days at a time uh, for testing purposes. And then mm. uh, only once has it been a teacher with the, with their own physical symptoms. But right. you no, know, the more and more we open up, the more and more we're going to become in contact with somebody that uh, might just have a sore throat or a, a cold. Sure. Uh, but because of the positions we're in, um, we need to err on the side of caution and make sure that we get the, some test results before we allow them back into a classroom. At least that's how I've been handling it. Sure. So, uh, so that's been difficult. You need to make sure that you uh, you got a couple good supply teachers at hand and mm -hmm. uh, and that you have a contingency plan. Uh, but other than that, I mean, I guess just uh, it's not as bad as you think is right. what I guess you could say. <laughs> and 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 listen, I mean, I'm still like I've got you know 66 kids in the school right now, right. so uh, September is going to be a whole new reality for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. But. Um, you know, we'll get through it. And the other thing that I did, and that, uh, 
I, I probably not the best suggestion for September, but I, I, we consciously made an effort to make the end of this school year since startup to feel like the month of June. Like we're, mm. we're working on academics and we're taking that serious, mm-hmm. but we're also taking a lot of walks and bike rides mm-hmm. and line dancing every Friday. Cool. Like we're trying to, you know, lower anxiety and have some fun yep. in a year that hasn't been a lot of fun for a lot of people. So. Those are, that's amazing advice right there. That's, I want to leave it there because I think that that puts the exclamation point on this, that uh, that we'll get through this, that we will get through this. Yeah. And, and hearing your examples are just, just really wonderful. And I want to thank you for your perspective on things and how things have been going at Butler. And I want to wish you a, a good end of the year and hope that you have a good summer rest and, uh, that also June, uh, when September rolls around, we, uh, we're ready to rock and roll. All right. Well, I thank you very much. And, uh, I think you're right. Like we we're, we're going to get through this and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a medical emergency, not an educational emergency. We just need to, uh, you know, do our best and, uh, get through it. And, uh, the kids are a lot more resilient than we give them credit for. Amen. Amen. All right, Mr. Morgan, you take care of yourself. It was great talking to you again. And, uh, We'll talk again soon. All the best. Cheers. Have a good one. Bye.